guys, Andrew Chin here. So we're back at it again. Um, back to part nine, whatsoever. But um, in this part, I'm gonna be actually understanding the code that I implemented, and I'll be going into great details. So there's gonna be there's gonna be zero di difficulty, right? The difficulty is zero, but I might spend a little bit of time, you know, exploring this kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a really interesting journey. This is the stuff that I really learned from. Um, yeah, and um, this part might be kind of informative. I might like do a little summarization of everything I learned at the end. So yeah, make sure to make sure to like skip the middle part of this video and just like jump to the end because I think I'll be um, um, revealing everything that I have learned and maybe the information that I compiled is helpful to you somehow. And that would really be that would be really awesome. So yeah. Um, to be honest, learning the code is probably just coming down to um, that 30 minutes or even just 5 minutes of that hyper focus. So I'm just trying to be super focused, um, set up my working environment real quick and just get into it. So we just spent a little bit of time there, you know, figuring out what the generator actually does and also what the discriminator actually does. Um, again, it's really simple. Generator takes in the shape of um, noise and then predict based on the noise. Um, discriminator takes on an image, which is probably 64 times 64 times 3, and then outputs a, a scalar value, which predicts, um, you know, the possibility of the incoming image being from the real distribution. So now I'm going to get onto the real training side and then I'm going to go study these because, um, you know, training is usually the code is where the code is actually hard is probably not going to, is probably not going to be the same. Um, you know, cause like in, in the network, like however, however bad your code is, it's probably going to be looking like this, right? You're probably going to be adding layers, stuff like that. But, um, you know, in the training step, people's code can always vary it, you know? Like for example, this guy put the um, put the variable name of num num steps, which I had to think for a while until I realized, oh, that he means the epoch, right? So the same thing, but different uh, usage. And like a lot of people might decide to use different packages. Like I've never seen this to be honest. The Q, I've never seen. Um, um, he had some other stuff. But yeah, that's my point. But you know, I'm gonna study his now, so it's gonna be interesting. All right, guys. So now I'm actually like, now I'm actually, I'm so confident that I can write this code without looking at it. Wait, I can write something like this code that does the same thing without looking at it. So, um, okay, so I will, I would love to, you know, review and recap everything I learned and uh, hopefully that makes sense to you too. Um, so here we go, right? Um, we're in machine learning, we always got to make a model. So in our specific case, GANs have um, two parts of the model, a generator G and the discriminator D. The generator, you know, takes in a noise. This noise is random. It's actually random. So random, every, it's actually random every single time. Um, and then this generator's job is going to take that noise, feed it through a lot of convolutional neural networks, and then feed it, um, uh, and then at last I'll put it into a uh, 64 times 64 times three. Um, uh, which is an image in our case because anyways, so like we're trying to output that and to feed a noise, which is maybe, you know, one by one by a hundred into a 64 times 64 times three, all we got to do, you know, we just got to, um, implement correct uh, filters, correct kernels, um, kernel size actually doesn't matter about the size, but correct. Oh wait, it should. Well, anyways, if you want to manip manipulate the size while, you know, putting that through the convolutional neural networks, you got to alter the strides, the um, kernel size, and the filters. 
or, and the padding sometimes. But in our specific case, um, this man here did not use paddings. So then the discriminator, its job is to predict. Its job again is to take an input, right? Um, and then predict how how possible is that um, in, is its input from the original distribution. So right, we have these real data sets in our database. Um, so the model D is going to take in some of that, uh, can take in either some real data sets or it can take in some fake data sets. And it's going to, it's probably, it's going to predict a prob probability of how likely that input is from the real distribution. So again, it can be taken, uh, the generator generators output, or it can be taken, um, the real data distribution, um, from like the 9,000 anime face faces that I saved on my local drive. Now, um, so then we get into how to exactly train it because if you guys watched this video and the last video you guys probably know I've been like talking about the models a lot like probably makes sense to you already um so the training right the training part we got to make the noise and the specific line that makes the noise is you know with mp.random and um I think it is I think it is here Right, so we return the empty dot random dot normal. So make sure the normal, so that you know, um, the distrib the the random data added together is still going to be the same value. So that is what normal does. And we're going to give it the size of the batch size and then the noise shape. So, um, to cut off really quick, to go off the tangent really quick, batch size is you know how many images are trained at a time. So for example, even though I said that the generator, or let's say the um, Yeah, let's say the um, yeah use generator as an example. Even though I said that the noise are usually one by one by a hundred, it can be you know like a hundred by one by one by a hundred, which means we have a hundred batches. And um, you might think that's actually incompatible with the the model, but the cool thing is that I believe Kira's model probably predicted that we will use something like um, we will we might be training on a batch already. So actually in the model, it always have a, oh, I can't scroll all the way up. But if I print out the model summary, summary real quick, you guys will see what I'm talking about. There's always going to be a, um, a parameter before like the 64 by 64 by three. And that is just a parameter called none. And, um, you know, it's not going to have any values in it. And partially probably because Kira's is expecting us to, to train on batches. Okay, I have no idea what's happening here. Uh, G equals to gets again normal. Now let's give the size of one by one by a hundred. This noise thing does not really matter. So as you can see here, there's always a none shape. And that is that is in our case gonna be our batch size. Um, right, so let's go back off to where we left off. I think I was talking about the training and predicting the noises, right? So we make the noise, we predict the noise. And again, mp.random is the way that we make the noise. Um, and then, you know, we got to, we got to have a data set for our discriminator to train on. And earlier we said that the discriminator can either take in, you know, some of that real data distribution from, you know, the 9,000 anime bits that we saved on our drive or the, the generator's output right that we might have just created so you know we, we are going to predict the noise which um in our case when we have um 64 as our batch size we're going to actually this fake data right here made with calling the generator uh, predict it's going to make 64 images because our batch size is 64. now of course it's actually 64 times 64 times 64 times 3 which will make it 64 images i'm going really deep now by the way i think um um yeah I, I i might be explaining too much but okay then you know um we can make it a little really easy data so we can label these um fake data x right there's like 64 of them and then we can label them with the, the y value to label them might be uh zero 
right? Because they are fake ones and we want the discriminator to learn that those are the fake ones. And while we're also going to take in some of that data from the real data set and label them as one and then merge the, the real label data set with the fake label data set and then feed them into the discriminator so that the discriminator can train on those at that data set and learn, you know, which which inputs are fake and it's going to tune it a little bit and it's going to learn you know, which inputs are real and it's going to tune the model a little bit. So actually the guy had a really interesting way of implementing this. I'm, I'm, I kind of like this, you know, he is labeling the real data by one, but he's also subtracting the ones each by a really small number so that the labels are actually like 0.98 ish or 0 0.97. I don't know if that's going to help um, the actual training process, but I'm really, um, really intrigued by this idea. So it's actually not labeling exactly like zero and one, like I think I did in the MNIST uh, video, but that's how he's doing it, which is really cool. All right, so then the discriminator learns right from that data set that we create ourselves, and then we got to tra train the GAN, right? The GAN's model. So the GANs model is going to be trained on a data set of, um, the generated output, comma, um, ones, because the generator is trying, the generator's goal is to make images that are as close as to the, um, real data, let me see. I think I'm not wording this correctly. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to train something that is as real as the you know from the real data, right? Um, so it's it's trying to get to one as much as possible, which means we're going to make that our goal. And um, the actual training here is GAN dot train on batch GAN X GAN Y, where GAN X is again the normal noise, which will uh yeah, which will generate some um. You know that's 64 times 100 times 1 times 1 times 100 and again y is the real data y and real data y is um this thing right here so a bunch of labels that are uh really close to one so the gan so that is our gan score so you know if you if you kind of like jot these down um the train on batch for this one and the train on batch on that one it might not make sense now i don't know how to explain exactly how does it make sense but you know, once you write down their goals, it might make sense. Yeah. I think I'm missing a lot of points, but that's honestly, it's, you know, a lot of the, like, here's something I learned. A lot of the, a lot of the methods, uh, you know, that people make are honestly just for debugging purposes. So when I came up to this, I was super scared, but you know, a lot of these code right here and these packages imported are only for debugging purposes. So for example, we can erase this whole thing, actually this whole thing, because we need the save part, right? We need to save the ways that, um, that the GAN just trained. Um, but besides that, a lot of these are debugging and always going to be a lot of um, helper me methods. So for example, save image batch, generate image, generate noise, sample from data set. So that's a lot that I learned, you know, the the GAN and the the GAN and how do we actually implement it. There are some questions for me, of course, and I think I'm gonna ask it on Reddit, you know, Stack Overflow, Meta, Meta Stack Exchange, whatsoever. But you know, there's a lot of these code right here: discriminator dot trainable equals to true, generator dot trainable equals to false. Um, I personally don't see like why do we need that? Is it? Because I thought that when the GAN trains, it's only going to train the GAN. GAN, so it's not going to mess with the discriminator. So maybe that is only for debugging purposes, you know, to tell yourself like, okay, hey, okay, we're coming to this part. So, you know, when I'm going back to reading my code, I know, okay, when I see this, this probably means that my GAN is training because training because my discriminator is off. So um, a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of stuff that I learned. I'm uh, I'm really afraid if I didn't go into the real details, so please leave a comment if you know you want me to go into more details in my videos, stuff like that. Um, um you know, and after documenting my machine learning journey, I'm I'm expecting honestly like a hundred episodes. I'm going on, yeah, I'm going on this one strong. But then after like a hundred episodes, I'm gonna be start making tutorials of these 
um, you know, writing my own code while being able to reach out and help the community. So that will be it for this video. Appreciate it a lot if you watched. Um, hopefully you learned something, even though this is my just like this video is my attempt to only document my journey. But hopefully, you know, you gain some you gain some information. You know, there's probably no entertainment. So hopefully you uh you gain uh information there. So see you guys next time.